Yo, what's up guys? Say Chronicles here talking about professions. Main thing, to do or not to do? Should you do professions? Can you skip out on them? How much stuff do you skip out on? Is it worth it to do? Is it worth the time? Is it worth the investment? That's all what we're going to explain in this video. Also, what are the good things within each profession? I'm going to talk about all four of them. I'm going to talk about the promotions. I'm going to talk about the pros, the cons, how much time it will take, how you should level them, and all of that kind of good stuff. So. If you're interested in that, stick to this whole video, watch it all the way to the end. Like this video as well, subscribe to the channel, still trying to grow this channel. And let's talk about professions. First thing I want to talk about with the professions is how can you do professions? For example, if I want to do cooking and I want to do this, you could buy this table and you can do cooking everywhere. So wherever you are at the world map. But if you don't have that, you have to move to a cooking bonfire. Same thing counts, for example, if you want to do processing. But in this case, for processing, I did buy the processing table. I think for processing, it's very useful because you do that everywhere in the map. Um, I have it bought for alchemy as well. And I think I bought the one for blacksmith too. Blacksmith, I could arguably say maybe you can skip out on because you don't do it that often. But you're going to notice processing is something you do a lot and alchemy is something you do a lot as well. Cooking, I personally don't do too much, and backsmith is at very specific moments. So it would be okay to walk to an anvil then. So in this case, let's say I have to walk to a cooking thing. You just let it move over there, and it will find its own cooking range or whatnot. Sometimes you're more closer by, sometimes you're further away. But as you can see, it's not that bad to do the cooking from here. Okay, let's start off by first things first. How do you level all of these things? You level them by doing the promotion. So with the promotion, you want to hand in these materials to get to a higher level. So for example, if I would say like, okay, I want to hand in these red diamonds and I deliver them, I am done with this part and I have to do that for all of these parts. For example, I can do this one pretty easily and then done. The moment you have everything done, you progress to the next level and you have to do that for all of these to improve that. So first of all, a very important factor of crafting is you're going to need a lot of resources. And what I mostly do is I just get the resources from the lizard man. I just check whatever promotions I want to do, what specific things I want to craft. I send the lizard man to get those. Um, I use my tactic to get as many things in. So I switch runes. If you switch runes, you can set another team with the same uh, runes, but on a different power, like towards specific things. You don't have to have the units ruined up the moment that this whole thing process. You can just the moment you set them up, they have to have a certain power, after which you can draw the power out of them. So therefore, if you take a little bit of time switching some runes here and there, you can actually go for the highest tier of sending out your uh, things. And therefore, you can see I have like three of the highest tier things sending out. And that's how I get pretty much all of my resources. I don't buy them. I don't mine them pretty much, like almost never. I just send the lizard man all the time. Like I keep track of the lizard man sending his stuff out. And that's how I do all of my leveling for pretty much every crafting thing. Let's first start looking at processing. Like, what is processing? How does it look like? Where should you do it? How high should you level it? What is important in processing? So in processing, it's pretty much the base step for both alchemy and uh, blacksmith. And you're going to need probably at least level six for most things that you want to do. Actually, level five is already pretty good because then you can do like the higher tier of the gems. You cannot do toe passes yet, which is needed for Blacksmith 5, if I'm not mistaken. But as you can see, you can do most things. Um, well, as I said, very simply, it is just the, um, the stepping stone towards the alchemy and the Blacksmith. But there's one thing that is interesting in here as well, which are these props for sale. So props for sale are something that you can craft. They cost decent amount of um, stuff. But let's say we craft one of those. This one is pretty easy to craft. This one is actually very easy to craft. I didn't even notice that. It has a weekly amount of one slash one. Normally, uh, this is used as one of the steps for uh, the processing uh, promotion. So in this one, I have to do this one. But what can you do with that item? And if I go to a general shop right now, let's walk over there. We hit the sell button. We go to our inventory and we scroll probably all the way down. We sell this thing 25k. That is the easiest 25k ever because the materials that I handed in were pretty much trash. And the higher tier that you do for um, 
that processing thing. So now I did the lowest tier. Let's say I would do a higher tier. This one is also pretty much trash and it still costs like nearly nothing. How about this one? Also costs nearly nothing. Uh, this one I actually do need for the promotion. So I'm not going to hand that in. It is on a weekly thing. But if we sell those right now, we check at the general shop. It's like, okay, what do you give me for those? You give me 5k for that one and you give me 100k for that one. So sure, I think because of all of the achievements and that kind of stuff, you're not really running out of money yet, but you are going to get to a certain point where you're like, mm, I'm kind of low on that gold and I could use some extra gold. This is one of those places. These are all on a weekly thing, um, especially the one at the bottom, because this these two materials you get like all the freaking time. So that is something useful that you might be like, OK, um, I actually want to hand those in. And yeah, as you can see here, I think this one, um, I think it's like 100K, 250K, 500K, and then maybe even like a mil or so. I'm not sure. Like they are like pretty good in value at some point. They are also somewhat costly to craft actually. But if you don't mind to do the mining and therefore get these things, then processing in that case can give you a little bit of money too. Moving on to the next one, alchemy. And I think alchemy is one of the interesting ones. If, well, I think it's on equal level interesting as blacksmith. No, no, wait, it's actually above that. So what is about alchemy? You can get all kinds of gems here. And these gems are just insanely good. So these gems you equip on weapons. Um, these you have for the weapons and sub weapons is the side thing. You, you might be like kind of overwhelmed, like, wait, what is everything for? These are for runes. These are for runes. Uh, you can craft runes. You have to craft these three. But another thing that is very interesting is you can craft skill books. And I will actually show a piece where I did my uh, skill book crafting and how much power that actually gave. I'll show that right now. So I got Professions Alchemy 6. And with Alchemy 6, you can use all of those that you've been collecting for a while into skill books. It is somewhat on the pricey side, but it is definitely worth it. And with skill books, you get skill ups. And with skill ups, you get power. And that power is going to be, we are at Orbian 99.6. We're going to toss in a bunch of skills. Uh, we also have to, or not have to, but open that thing. Mm, 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 mm. How many LD5s? <laughs> Still two, man. My summoning luck uh, ran out after the first two days. So yeah, we have that. And then we have a bunch of skills we can apply. You could go for the good things, but you, if you want to aim for more power, you should aim for everything a little bit. But yeah, as you can see, 400 in there. Uh, let's ulti here, another 400 in there. Uh, I kind of want to do this skill because it's your armor break and your strip and that kind of Gucci stuff. So that one is worth a little bit more for me. If I want to aim more for PvP stuff, I should go for more for these things. Hmm... What do I want to do? These are pretty cheap and they still give like 300 each. So if you want to aim for power, you should just go for these things that are cheap. And then uh, let's up this one as well. So we were at 99.6 and now Orbia is pretty much 2k more. So that is a good improvement for your power as well. And as you can see, like crafting those skill books at Alchemy 6 is it's very nice to go aim for. You have those research logs, probably quite some stacking up, so you want to use them over there. You can also craft like mystical scrolls, but I don't really think it's worth it. Same for this unknown scroll. It costs too much of those faint memory cores, which you definitely need for a whole bunch of other things as well. So I wouldn't really start putting them into scrolls all too much. But let me actually show you what are the good things about alchemy. So if we go to our summoner, you can see that we have like pretty high tier of gems of those. And this counts for every monster. So if I equip the fire weapon, all of my monsters will have that close to 6% extra crit damage. Same for all of these. I got like a whole bunch of decent gems already. That is very nice. Then we see the stat that's extra in here, the crit rate one. That is actually the applied stone that is on stuff as well. So that's also a thing that you, you can craft for. So that's another stat boost you can get. Then you also have that for your accessory. You also have a... Um, gem or like an, uh, an effect stone that you can put into it. So there's a lot of small improvements in that. 
And then, of course, we also still have the runes. If you check out the rune, we can put a book in it and we can put a, uh, I think it's a galaxy stone in it. I think that's the right name. So there's a whole bunch of things that you could be like, okay, so I can get quite some extra stats. And adding just one of those stones for like tier 3 or tier 4, tier 4 especially, probably adds you like 400 power per rune. So you can add like quite some extra stats from doing those. Currently, I'm actually on the grind to getting a lot of uh, those things in here. So the galaxy stones. For that, I do need quite some material um, in these. And for that, I send the lizard man away. So I'm not actually mining myself most of the time. So yeah, with that, I'm mostly sending the lizard man out right now for like these things and these things. And I'm kind of getting on the grind for that. I could level it higher towards a higher tier, but I'm not too focused on it yet. I think the level 6 is very important because of these uh, skill books. Level 7 is very nice, but you can also see like crafting this one is quite some materials, but it is a doable okay amount. If you check for the next one, you're like, okay, that is quite some. That it's still doable, but that is quite some. And then we check this there and you're like, yo, okay, th th this is like on the point of like demotivation of like, that's a lot of stuff to craft for. So yeah, I would say the level seven is pretty useful uh, or the level seven is nice, but it's going to take you quite some time to get these materials. But if you check, for example, the level four, I feel like the level four uh, or the uh, tier four or from level six is pretty doable to get these materials and get those things in so i would aim for like either alchemy level five or alchemy level six alchemy six of course is very nice for this one and from that you can slowly start progressing towards seven and further on but alchemy is actually one of those you don't want to skip out on because as i said if you put these three stones on five weapons you're going to increase your power by a lot then you have um these you need as many of what you actually need six of those so you need you could have six of those each six of those this one you can have like literally let's say you have a team of three six runes per you need 18 of those that are good then you have that for the skill books as well so there's a lot of stuff and let's say that every stone you add is like 300 to 500 power you can say how many multipliers or you can count how many multipliers i just said times three four hundred power that's an insane amount of power that you can get for alchemy so alchemy is definitely one that I would say do, don't skip out on. But just if you don't like the mining process, send the lizard. That's, that's the best option. Send the lizard every time and that's just the way to go. Moving on to the next one, cooking. Cooking is something that I actually personally barely do. You have some cooking food that can give you quite some material of saying like, or it can give you some good bonus stats. Like you have some stuff like, oh, you get like 360 attack for 30 minutes, blah, blah. You know, honestly, I don't think it's um, it's like a short, like it, it's like a long progression. Like you have to keep paying to get certain results. And I don't really like that. I get, like my stat boost to be there and stay there. If you want to do a specific dungeon and you can clear it, maybe like that 8% extra crit rate is going to help you at the highest tier and that kind of stuff. The materials for this is not that expensive to craft at the moment you're at the right level. So some of these things are more worth it than others. But personally, I didn't do all too much crafting in general. Actually, I could kind of use this one because my crit rate on my Orbia is kind of low. So, But I will get at 7 in a moment. I will explain how you can... Go Cooking is, however, the most easy one to level out of all professions, which I will show in a second as well. So yeah, as you can see, I pretty much didn't do anything with Cookie yet. I, I didn't get the potions. I didn't get all of those. You could craft these, which is not bad, but you're going to need a whole bunch of uh, Eagle Rays for that. I think this is somewhat worth it to craft. It is not that expensive, um, but yeah, it is just okay. I don't recommend to do these, however, because if you do uh, the meditation research log with cooking, you spend five, whereas if you do it with alchemy, you don't spend the side materials and you spend, or you, this one spends six, um, but for alchemy, it is five and you don't spend the two side materials. So I would definitely wait until you have your alchemy six to do this one. Other things that are interesting for cooking, pretty much not there. Like there, there's just a few foods that I would say like, okay, you get some good stuff from it, but it's nothing too crazy, even like on the master level. But then speaking about, okay, how do we actually level cooking? Because we need a shit ton of things cooked. Like 
my ass i'm gonna cook this i have to find out like okay which kind of thing do i have to research for also if you don't know let me ex actually quickly explain like how does that researching thing work and i will just link a video in the description where you have like all of these recipes so if you didn't have this recipe yet you need to find the brass and then you need to find probably it's like natural water plus like a fish or some shit issue is however if you click on a fish you have to actually click on the fish like what freaking fish is a brass like i don't freaking know man like that's the annoying part it would be very nice if they actually said the name of the fish over there because currently i'm just clicking all kinds of fucking fish like what the fuck is a brass fish man i don't fucking know oh here we have a, a large amount of brass so if we do that probably with this no i need to be have near to a bonfire whatever but yeah as you know i don't really care about cooking there are some points later on in the game where you will have the uh, book and you have like a collection log book. And with that one, uh, you have to do some cooking for like a Devilmon. And that is that part is pretty worth it though. But then again, you could also just buy them from the exchange center and just be lazy and just get it over with that way if you don't want to check where all the cooking stuff is at. But then explaining, how do you level cooking? Because no way in hell I will be doing all of these if I had to do it myself. What you do is actually very simple. If you go to the guilds and you go to the guild shop and in the guild shop, you can buy ingredients and every tier of this equals to one tier of your cooking. So if I get 15 K uh, guild points, I can hand in these guild points and I can go straight. Like I get all of the material that I just showed that I need for that level. So that is very chill and that can get you all the way to level seven. So definitely do that. Don't start cooking yourself. Just just do this. Then we have the last one, but actually not the last one. We also have master to talk about. But first, blacksmith. Blacksmith is very interesting. And this is something you're definitely going to need uh, later end game. So currently the best weapons we can buy from Foggy are these. And then sometimes we get these. But it's actually possible that if I would like, if I have one of those weapons that is a uh, 5.2, if I add in all of the materials, which I actually have more than plenty of, I could make it a 5.3. Currently, because we're already getting White Castle within a week, I'm not too interested about that yet, because White Castle base stats is already a 5.2. And I think the highest one that we could craft there is a 5.5. Um... The moment we get like a new rate, we need seal for this to uh, unlock that. So uh, we need, yeah, that's material you get at a later point because you see like you get these suicide bomber explosives and you get like these things and these things. So this is the, the fourth rate and this is like the, the seal rate, which is slightly different. So we don't have those materials yet. But if you're six, you can already start upgrading those things if you like. However, I don't really think blacksmith is a must yet because we can actually do a lot of foggy runs and therefore you just get like the the five twos and you buy the equipment. If you were to say like, okay, I have a specific up, uh, uh, equipment that I want to go from all the way like upgrading, then you would have to upgrade it to this tier, which is pretty doable. It's not that expensive. And then you can upgrade it to that tier as well. So it's actually a two step to get to an uh, upgrade as well, which I think for especially for foggy is not that expensive. And you would need to have level five or level six for it. I think level five and level six are pretty doable for uh, blacksmith in general. But as you see, at some point, like when we get to the point where there is like Naraka, which is the third one, you definitely want to get these um, this blacksmith seven because then you can craft all the way to like a six one weapon. And as you can see, the base stats. So the base stats of a six one weapon is close to eighteen hundred, and the one let's say it compared to the ones we're currently working with is fourteen hundred. So that is, um, wait, did I say 1600, 17? No, 1800, pretty close. So yeah, that you, there you can see there's a lot of extra stats and that counts for everything. So at some point you definitely do want to get these in. Also at the higher tiers, you will see that you get like special, um, like a substat thing, like, okay, if we have the whole set, we get 150 uh, defense bonus. This one gives HP, if I'm not mistaken and this one gives a uh, summoner attack and then if we go even further we get like monster defense this one is really good but this one's also a lot more harder to get and this one is damage reduced from uh monsters or, or damage taken reduced by monsters and that kind of stuff so there's a lot of good things for crafting uh with blacksmith but i recommend to start progressing on it already 
but you don't necessarily need that that early game. Like to be honest, when I started playing my first playthrough in NA server, I didn't touch blacksmith at all. And at some point I was like, yo, I actually want to get those weapons upgraded. That's that's some, actually some good value. And then you have to start doing it. Talking about the promotion of blacksmith, blacksmith promotion asks you to do a lot of subjugation. And for subjugation, you get at some point, you get these specific things and you have to craft them in, select them in and craft that. And then you also have to do a specific um, tier or uh, path of adventures to get these materials of like the specific dungeons. And then you can craft them to the next step. So with that, it takes you a little while to get all of these together, but there are some shortcuts as well. A thing which I did, especially for the previous level, is let's say, okay, how many ice weapons do I need? Or how many from one dungeon do I need? So, okay, I need this one. I need that one is from the ice one. That one is from the ice one. Okay, so these three are from the ice one. So let's say I start farming that dungeon. So that is in this case, if I'm not mistaken, let me double check. It is this one. Yes. And then you can also see like, okay, in this case, I already have it, but you can also check like if you don't have it, let's see something I don't have. Source, okay, where can we get that? Where can we get that? Also something I already have. Do I have something I don't have? Pretty sure I don't have you. Source, yes, one lower level also already have. Damn it, trying to search something I don't have. This one, however. One tier lower, also already have one. I did do a good amount of subjugation already. I just have to craft them to higher levels. That's the main thing. At some point, you have to do your subjugation anyways. Okay, this finally, I found one that I don't have. But you have to do your subjugation anyways for your transcendence, for your main character. So you have to do it anyways. But let's say um, I have to do this. You check like, okay, I have to do the Ice Warden. And you get these materials from it. I would recommend to do it on the highest level because that also gives you, as said, the... Uh, transcendence pieces and this one is the one that you're going to be lacking the most for leveling up your main character but what is interesting and useful to do is actually to check like okay how many of a specific uh dungeon do i have to farm i do those and then you check like okay i have three four items from one the moment i get three out of four i use the extra method to get the fourth weapon and that is if you go over here you can buy these weapons through the subjugation shop so you can actually buy them at the upcraft or the, the uh, upgraded state except for the legendary state but you can buy them right away so you skip a crafting step but it's very useful to check like okay i have four weapons i first farm the thing to get like three out of four and then the fourth one has an odd of one in 25 of having the specific weapon then i buy that one and if you do that the other way around, you start buying like three things and then you need the one in four. You're going to get all the drops that you bought before, right? So you want to be smart with that and first get a few, like two out of four or three out of four, and then buy the last piece. That is just a, a very good recommendation for that. And that is pretty much how you slowly progress those. And then you also have to check like, okay, in this case, I do have this lower weapon. I can upgrade that because I farmed the lizard a bunch of times. But this one I can also do. But for example, I haven't done like that much of uh, these, the Ice Warden, I haven't done that much of like the, the, the Mad uh, Scientist. So I have to farm those as well to get these things in. But once again, like I said, you're not going to need Blacksmith all too much. I would recommend to, when you focus on subjugation, also focus on this a little bit, that you kind of level it like hand in hand so you don't stagnate on progression. Also, do not throw away all of those weapons that you get from subjugation keep at least one piece of all of them and afterwards if you have duplicates it's more okay to uh, toss them but keep in mind that some of blacksmith 5 you also need in blacksmith set 6 again and probably in masters again so to talk about masters masters is well as you can see uh, in the profession itself what you all get from masters but masters will take you quite a while to actually obtain the reason why masters take so long is because you have a you pretty much need the highest tier of everything from every profession so that means for example for processing you're going to need like three of those that is already straight up like three weeks because there's a weekly entry of like how much how many times you can actually get this thing processed 
Uh, but you're also going to need, you need like a shit ton of those, of those. Like there are so many things that you're like, ooh, th this is like heavy to get. So I wouldn't recommend to rush for Masters. Masters is going to take you a long time. You're going to get there over time if you play like quite a while. But focus on getting, like I would say, Processing 6 is important. Alchemy 6 is important. Blacksmith 5 just to do your uh, subjugation kind of stuff like on par. And then from there, start slowly progressing towards higher. So that is everything about professions. Pretty lengthy video, but I think it's very interesting. Also, I hope you enjoyed this content. Like the video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet. And see you in the next one.